Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another video for uh, Math 8. We're going to do lesson 109 today. Um, and uh, yeah, hope everything is going well with you guys, that you're having a good time, that you had a good spring break. Um, and uh, we're going to jump into it. However, uh, big disclaimer, this lesson is a little bit different because your book is actually wrong about the interest. And so I'm going to talk about real life. And this this lesson is actually pretty easy. So um, for the answers that you have to put for the book, you have to put them like that. But for the test, you have to put them the way I tell you to because that's how real life works. And trust me, I know this because we're going to talk about things like... Um, Mortgages, um, car loans, and credit cards. Those are the things that we're talking about with consumer interest. So it's not so much that you have to do a lot of math with, math with it. It's just un, uh, finding uh, simple or compound interest, which you should probably know by now how to do. Um, but it's about the percentage and the amount that you're getting, that you're borrowing. So um, it's it's a little bit different because of that. Uh, obviously, a credit card is a smaller amount than a car loan, and then a car loan is not as much as a mortgage, which is what we call a house loan. Um, so obviously, houses are more expensive than cars by a lot, and then cars are more expensive than what you could ever buy with a credit card unless you have a crazy credit card and then um, it goes that way and so uh, your book has the percentages wrong about the um, interest rate for each one of them so I'm gonna go into what they are because I right now have credit cards and I'm also paying a uh, car and so I know about this um, and my parents obviously before have had a mortgage praise the Lord we don't have a mortgage anymore that's a huge testimony that I'm not gonna go into it but um, yeah so Let's get into the lesson. Okay, so let me explain to you what we're talking about with mortgages, car loans, and credit cards. The first thing that I have to talk about is probably APR. APR means annual, meaning a yearly annual percentage rate. Annual percentage range. I think it is what it's um, called. And so, yes, annual percentage rate. And so what that means is the interest that they will give you. And so the mortgage, the car loans, and the credit cards, they always have a percentage rate. Now, in your book, it says that it's 7% mortgage for mortgage, 7.5 for auto, and credit card is um, one and a half to two and a half monthly. So it does depend on that. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Uh, this one is going to be uh, more of a fixed rate. Um, the mortgage because of the amount of money that you're that you're uh, borrowing from a bank or from whatever financial institution you're borrowing. This one is going to be a little bit uh higher and it's still fixed meaning that they won't keep on charging you more it's uh based on the o original um price of what you bought the car and this one does change according to how much money you have spent of the credit card that they give you and they are telling you monthly rates for credit cards but uh, they are not talking to you about APR. And so what I wanted you to know about the APR, the annual percentage rate, is that for mortgages, it's going to be lower. And, and they, it doesn't really have an APR because the, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. They don't uh, lend you money annually for the mortgage. They lend you out the big amount of money at first, and that's it. They're not going to give you any more. And so once they do that, they will charge you monthly, and that's what paying the mortgage is. And so um, you have to have manageable payments throughout the duration or the length of time that you're going to be paying for those. And you have to understand, this one could be 30 to 15 years. 15 years is usually um, half of what most people do. Most people do 30 years. 
30 year means that you have to pay the same thing for 30 years. You have to pay that amount monthly. And so um, it's a lot of money. We'll do the math and you'll see why it's so profitable for some people to actually lend money to buy houses because they end up paying them a lot more. Yes, it's not going to be all at once, but it's over 30 years they get a lot of money. Um, for the car loans, it's going to be shorter periods of time, 24 months, 2 years, to 72 months, which is something that I didn't know existed until I actually went to buy a car, and they actually pushed me to the 72-month-a-year one. Um, and it's just a new thing that they're doing, but they do put the interest a little bit higher. And then this one, it doesn't have... a duration because it's for however long you have your credit card but you have to understand the APR can vary from 12% a year meaning 1% a month some people have actually as low as 6% but those are really really rare cards so most people would actually go from 12% to 27 29 maybe even 30% but I put it 27 because 27 is still pretty high and so that's uh, that's how much it is. And so for the APR for uh, car and credit cards, the APR is going to be lower in a car than it is going to be for a, for a credit card. But this is the largest amount that you could borrow. This is the second largest. And this one, it depends on of the limit of your card. So when I was in college, I got my first credit card, it was $1,000. Now my credit cards, I have two, are actually way bigger than that. Now, I don't recommend that you guys go and get a credit card uh, because you have to be very wise about how you spend your money because what happens is that the credit card is uh, money that they give you a limit. So they tell you, okay, I'm going to give you $2,000 and they give you this little plastic card and you can go to stores and buy things. And then you go and buy all you want. So if you spend the $2,000 in all at once, good for you. You don't really have to pay anything. But every month they will be charging you and uh, the more money you spend out of the credit card sometimes the higher the interest is going to go sometimes it jumps higher uh, just by not making your payments in time and so you have to be very responsible and so this is uh, more of a life lesson uh, more than just like a math lesson that you're going to be um, taken in tests and doing problems about this is a life lesson in which you have to understand when is it advisable for you to have the mortgage the car loans and the credit cards and the truth is this uh, a mortgage is actually a good investment if you think that you're going to use the house for a long time and that you have a financially stable job and and you're going to be able to and the Lord has been able to provide you with uh, all these things that you need then by all means get a mortgage because it's it's good advice to actually own property to own a house it's really good advice but you have to be careful though that you don't get in over your head sometimes people think only about the first few years maybe the first 10 years that they get the mortgage but they don't think about the 20 next years and so some people say okay let's do the 15 years but then you have to make sure that you have enough money to buy food like groceries and stuff and then you can pay bills you know electric gas uh water um now you have to pay internet bill nobody pays cable anymore anyway but some people have to pay netflix and other subscriptions uh monthly so you have to be careful you have to be careful you have to know what you're talking about here so um but but i would actually say that a mortgage is a good investment if you're going to end up having and owning your own house um then you have the car loans. Uh, it depends. Uh, and, and the one thing, my one advice for you for car loan is never, ever, ever buy an, a new car. And I'm going to tell you why. Because even if you want your dream car and you're going to buy it, uh, as soon, as soon as you drive it, even have um, a yard. It doesn't even have to be a mile. You drive it as soon as you turn on the car and drive even a little bit, you already took out about $3,000 to $5,000 right of the price. So if you drive it a little bit and say, oh, I don't want it anymore. I want to return it. They're not going to return all your money. They're all actually going to keep $5,000 uh, and they're going to say, okay, you can have the rest. But that's one of the reasons I don't think buying a new car is sound advice because you have to 
take into account that as soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses value automatically. It just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what brand it is. It doesn't matter um, how good of a driver you are. It doesn't matter anything like that. As soon as you drive it, it will lose value. So a lot of people don't realize that they go, they buy the new car, and then boom, they lose value. So it's always better to use to buy used cars. The other advice I have for you is because I was looking into it and I had to buy a car about a year and a half ago, two years something like that, is that I wanted a nice car. I wanted a BMW. Uh, it's one of the cars that I've always wanted. I wanted a BMW M5 series, but obviously that is super expensive. I can't afford it, so I just wanted a BMW. Um, but I was looking into it and just understand that paying a car loan is not just the only expenses you have for a car. You have to take into account also insurance, both for the house and for the car. You have to buy insurance and you have to buy um, gas. And you also have to make sure that you um, are able to change the oil regularly. About every two to three months, you have to change the oil depending on how much you drive your car. It's not depending on time. It's depending on how much you drive your car that you have to change the oil. Um, and you have to also take into account anything that could happen to the car, like mechanical breakdowns and stuff like that. So my first advice would be Japanese cars, Toyota, Nissan, um, Honda, they're actually really easy to maintain and most mechanics actually know how to do it. The parts also are cheaper, so I would advise you to get one of those cars. Uh, if you wanna go for anything luxury, Again, go with Lexus or something like that because it's a lot cheaper to maintain until you actually have something. Don't, don't be one of those people that have a really nice car but then they don't have anything else. That makes no sense to me. You're not going to live in your car. You're not going to really get a lot out of your car at first except going places. So do not buy a really nice car and not have anything else. You need to be able to save money. You need to be able to do things with money. So be wise about the money. The Lord wants you to be a good um, steward of the of the stuff that he gives you, of the money that he gives you. So yeah, be careful with the money. And with credit cards, be careful with how you spend them. A very good rule of thumb that nobody taught me that I had to learn by myself in um, the hard way, and I'm still paying for it, trust me. Uh, I've been trying to pay this credit card debt for a while, and it's it's till there. Um, and I have to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm, sometimes when I find myself in a bind, I go and, and I, I whatever I have left in the limit, I go again and then spend it. And so I maxed out my credit cards. Maxed out means that if they have four thousand dollars, which I think one of my cards has four thousand um, dollars, and I pay off little by little, you start to free up some of it. So uh, they give me four thousand dollars, I spend four thousand dollars. Then I have to pay and pay and pay and pay. But each time you pay and you don't spend. Uh, from that card, they kind of like give you some credit by, back, meaning they give you some money that it's available for you to spend if you need to. And so sometimes because emergency funds and whatever that happens, I do spend it from there um, because life is unpredictable. You sometimes need to pay things. And so sometimes when I pay from there, uh, again, my payments get high again. So I try to get them as low as possible by paying uh, something and another another really good advice from credit cards first of all don't max them out meaning don't spend all that they give you in fact if you're spending even close to 50% of what they give you if they give you a thousand dollars and you spent five hundred dollars you're doing it wrong you're supposed to spend about 30% and that is a lot so spend about less than 30% and the other thing is don't get a credit card and then not use it you have to use it but the most uh, the wisest way to use it is, for example, if you go and, and pay for gas with your credit card or small uh, small transactions that you know that at the end of the month you can actually pay like half of it. Uh, and don't, don't pay it all off, pay half of it because that starts to build a credit. And building a credit in the United States is really important because that's how you get good car loans and that if you actually are responsible with your credit then you get an amazing deal for your mortgage and that's really important because having good credit can get you out of, of a pickle um, by getting credit cards by getting good mortgages by getting good car uh, loans so uh, it's really important so the first thing is 
Don't max out your credit card. Don't even spend close to 50% of it. Spend about 30 or less. Uh, pay monthly, but don't pay the minimum payment. Pay a little bit more than the minimum payment. I would actually say pay 150% of the minimum payment. So if it's $100 that they want you to pay, pay $150 or something like that. Um, and, and be responsible with your credit. And so that's what this lesson is mostly about. It's about life advice, about what to do with credit cards, with car loans, with mortgages. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with mortgages because, um, as I said, my family does own a house, um, but it was the Lord's will that we had it. We paid cash, meaning that we have no mortgage on this house. This house is ours. We have the title. Uh, we don't owe any money to anybody, and so it's great. Uh, but then again, you have to pay pay attention because you have to pay insurance and you have to pay taxes. So it doesn't mean that you don't have to pay anything else. You have to pay insurance. You pay, have to pay taxes. You have to pay services. You have to pay obviously uh, insurance for your car. You have to pay for maintenance of your car. You have to pay credit cards. You have to pay student loans. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that goes on. So be smart. This lesson is about learning that real life sometimes requires credit, but the credit has to be very well handled and you have to know how to do things. And so uh, let's look at example one because there's only one example, right? And I'm going to read it. It says, Jason has a credit card balance of $1,200. The card company charges 2% interest on the unpaid balances each month. So it has a AP, uh, an APR annual percentage rate of 12%. This card has a 12% APR, but because it's annual, annual means every 12 months, and you divide 12 months by 12, you get one month. So every one month, they, he has to pay 2%. So it says, has a credit card balance of $1,200. So he owes 1200 bucks to the credit card company and it says what is the interest charge on Jason's current balance so let's do some math let's do right here so we're gonna have 1200 bucks right and they're asking us what is the interest charge so then we are only going to find two percent not one point two because they want us to know what the percentage is. So we're going to find zero, zero, four, uh, two, and then zero as a placeholder, times zero, times zero, times zero, times zero. It's gonna be zero, zero, four, sorry, and two, with two decimal places. <laughs> The interest charge is going to be $24. You see? So the they're going to charge him the minimum payment plus $24. Okay? Now they say, Jason has a choice of paying the balance plus interest in full or making a minimum payment of $50. If Jason makes only the minimum payment each month, what balance will he carry to the next month? So they're saying, okay, you can pay $1,200 plus the $24 that you owe us, or you could pay $50. And people are like, I'd rather pay 50 bucks, right? Most of you are going to be like, let's do the 50 bucks. Who cares about the $1,224? I don't really have that much money. That's a lot of money anyway. So then you're going to pay $50, but wait, because out of those $50, 24 are just interest. So you're actually paying $26 out of the main or the principal which is $1,200. So he only paid $26 out of the $1,200 he owed. The rest is interest that he has to pay because they lent him the money. And so how much does he owe next month? Well, next month he's going to owe $1,200 minus $26, which is going to be $1,174. $74. So he only paid $26 for the principal. And that's what I'm telling you. Don't pay just the minimum payment. The minimum payment is going to be a lot of it. It's going to be a big chunk of it. Chunk of it is going to be um, the interest rate. You only pay a little bit of what is 
what you owe. And so that's not a good idea. And the third part, it says, if Jason makes only the minimum payment and makes an additional $800 in purchases during the next month, what is Jason approximate balance after the next month's interest is applied? Well, we th have 1174 and then he went on and he spent 800 bucks. So he would owe the um, credit card company $1,974. So about really close to $2,000, right? So he would owe that much. And then um, you have to find 2% of the whole thing. I know that in your book they did 2% of this and 2% of this, but I guarantee you that if you find 2% of this, it's the same thing. So you would have to find 2% and then add it. So in here, what I'm going to do, I know I have hat hair, uh, in here what I have to do is 1.02, uh, 1, just for the 1,974, and 2 to find 2% of everything. So 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 7 is 14, and a 1 goes up. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 1 is 19, and a 1 goes up. 2 times 2 is 1, 2 times 3, is, two times, plus 1 is 3, sorry. Then 0 as a placeholder, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the zeros, and then 2 placeholders and a 1. Uh, so four, seven, nine, one. So I'm going to add it all together. Eight, four, three, and a one goes up. Eleven and a one goes up. Zero and a one goes up. Two. So I got two thousand thirteen dollars and forty eight cents. Look at that, $2,013.48, your book, because it says that you need to approximate, they actually approximated to 2014 bucks, which is kind of right, because 48 is close enough to 50, and 50 is, is obviously rounding up, so it'd be about $2,014 that what they owe. So, you see, the math in itself, I'm not really worried about, it was more about the financial um, knowledge that you had to get. And that's it, that's it for this lesson. So... Thank you for tuning in for this one, and I will see you in the next one.